Today, I want to talk about how Robinhood is planning for another bailout when both AMC and GameStop run by securing a $3 billion line of credit. I also want to explain what happens when those infinite liquidity fairies can't fulfill buy orders. So stay tuned and let's make some money. Just a quick one, the Easter sale is now live at the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group. Be sure to use code EASTER, all in capitals, at checkout for $100 off the price of the lifetime membership or four weeks for the price of three on the monthly membership using the link in the description below. I won't be doing another sale like this until Thanksgiving in October and by then the prices will have gone up. So now is the best time to secure your spot in the lifetime membership or monthly membership in the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group. But now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So. Amit has tweeted saying breaking news. Late last Friday afternoon, Robinhood secured an additional line of credit from JP Morgan, allowing them to secure up to $3.375 billion if needed. So he said, why does this matter? He said a large line of credit means a company can quickly access funds as needed without undergoing new debt issuances or equity sales. Basically, if Hood needs $3 billion, they could get it immediately without worrying. Now, so why is this really interesting and why is that $3 billion figure so specific? Well, you'll remember back in 2021, Robinhood faced a $3.4 billion margin call, aka they failed capital requirements by around $3.4 billion, and they struggled to come up with the cash. They turned off the buy button, they were debating about trying to raise debt, selling new shares, but nothing they could figure out would work quick enough. They ended up settling with the NSEC to reduce that margin call down to just $300 million. You may have seen this post from years ago saying the NSEC initially margin called Robinhood for $3.4 billion, lowering it down to just $300 million, a reduction of $3 billion, which Robinhood met. Robinhood was $3 billion short of this margin call, and the only reason they escaped the margin call was because the NSEC was kind of corrupt and worked with them to waive most of that margin call. There was a deficit here of pretty much $3 billion, which Robin Hood has now plugged that deficit with this new line of credit. But on the underlying, what this also means is that Robin Hood foresees himself desperately needing at least $3 billion of cash, potentially very, very soon. And again, the only reason I could imagine as to why Robin Hood are desperately going to need $3 billion of cash they don't have is if GameStop and AMC run up again, causing this same margin call problem. Now, of course, the mainstream media is trying desperately to push the price of AMC down and to scare retail investors into thinking AMC is going to go bankrupt. But the mainstream media has been wrong time and time and time again. They've been wrong in 2020, wrong in 2021, wrong in 2022, wrong in 2023, and now wrong again in 2024. We've seen articles from 2020 saying the AMC bankruptcy appears to be imminent. Again, they suggested AMC was unlikely to survive 2021, unlikely to survive 2022, unlikely to survive 2023, and now asks, will AMC survive 2024? Of course, desperately trying to scare you into thinking AMC will go bankrupt so that you can desperately sell off your shares to those short hedge funds and those market makers that are in desperate need of them. Today we had a few smaller fast moving momentum news plays on both FLGC for 18% and on CYTO for 15% as well. Today Chad also locked in an Amazon call option for 53% gains or for $910. As I said, today is the first day of the Easter sale, so be sure to sign up using the link in the description below using code EASTER at checkout for $100 off the lifetime membership or for four weeks for the price of three on the monthly membership. Now on that note, today we also saw GameStop running nearly 15% in one single day and running still in the after hours as well. As a note, GameStop also has its earnings tomorrow, which are expected to be positive profit generative earnings as well. If they do generate profits and if they do pay down any existing debt or remaining loans, they are in a position to either issue dividends or even perform share buybacks.
I've got a feeling right now GameStop doesn't have any external debt, but I think I remember reading somewhere on Twitter there was some kind of covenant somewhere preventing them right now at the moment from performing share buybacks. But of course, as soon as that covenant is out of the way, GameStop is free at any time to buy back more shares. Which again is likely what's got the mainstream media and both Robin Hood as well equally scared. Now on top of that, we've also seen what happens when a market maker or an infinite liquidity fairy can't fulfill a buy order. We know investors and retail investors aren't selling shares of AMC, and therefore the number of real sell orders out there at the current market price is slim to none. The only reason shares can be bought for the current market price is because those infinite liquidity fairies provide that infinite liquidity. But Simulation Ape Nation has experienced a moment today where he placed a buy order that was not fulfilled by an infinite liquidity fairy and he bought shares that were actually being sold by a small retail or individual investor. You can see here it was only a small order for 97 shares, obviously because the vast majority, 99.9% .9 of retail investors that are still holding AMC aren't selling. But what actually happened is this buy order didn't go through at the actual market price of $4.11 or $4.13, but at $23 per share. Simulation Ape Nation tweeted saying, dead ass, no Photoshop from my Fidelity account. How in the world was 97 shares filled today at an average of $23 per share? As Boss Blunts equally agrees, he said placing a market order for a stock that's trading at $4.12 was filled at $23 per share, which indicates a lack of liquidity and a lack of available shares for sale, or a lack of real available shares for sale. This is why these shorts cannot close their short positions because there's not enough real shares for sale by real retail investors at the market price or the current market price. The only people selling shares at the current market price is those infinite liquidity fairies selling fake shares. And obviously if these hedge funds wanted to buy real shares to close out of their short positions, they wouldn't be paying $4 per share, they wouldn't be paying $40 per share, they wouldn't be paying $400 per share, they'd be paying significantly more per share, whatever retail investors want. This is why these short sellers, market makers, banks and institutions have such massive figures for securities sold, not yet purchased because these infinite liquidity fairies have been selling fake securities at a fake market price for anyone to buy. Or as Doug Sifu says, fulfilling any purchase order at whatever he believes the national best bid and offer price to be because he has infinite liquidity. And finally for today, InvestorTurf has tweeted about how we're also seeing potentially up to 282 US banks facing a risk of collapse due to a harmful combination with $900 billion worth of assets being threatened. These banks are facing a dangerous combination of vulnerabilities that could lead them toward collapse. These banks are caught in a precarious situation with high exposure to commercial real estate loans and substantial unrealized losses on their financial statements. Claros Group believe revealing the names of those banks and their identities might trigger widespread bank runs. But there's been 282 banks identified with commercial real estate loans, exceeding 300% of their available capital. As I've previously said, many more banks are going to be collapsing this year, especially with interest rates remaining higher for longer. Rates have not been cut in March. Rates are now not expected to be cut in either May or in June also. These rates are going to remain higher for longer. Potentially, we may even see more rate hikes and these banks are going to continue struggling and there are going to be more bankruptcies. So guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.